Hey, welcome back folks. So today we're going to talk about DAX and measures. So I really want to thoroughly explain what they mean just so you have a good understanding as we dive into more videos where we go into DAX and measures and write them out explicitly. So for DAX, I have the definition here on the bottom left. And really what it means is it's your data analysis expression and it's how Power BI really codes things. So it's the coding language within Power BI. So if you look at this image here, you see this is the expression. This is a DAX expression. Now I know that everything here probably is pretty alien. However, we'll cover all this stuff at a later point. But the entire text that you see that's listed here together as a whole is called DAX. So anything you really write within this formula box is really just going to be DAX. And it's just what you're writing as a formula. So think of it and compare it to Excel and how you wrote formulas in the formula bar. It's the same exact thing in Power BI. Now the benefit of Power BI is that it's a little bit more efficient. You have less processing time and that you can get to your data and analysis faster. Benefit of DAX is that you can also work with tables. You can streamline data. You can present it in a way to where it's easier to digest at the user level. So there's also a lot of flexibility that comes with DAX as well, meaning you can create custom calculations so that you get specific data points that your audience may need. So going into DAX specifically, what we have here is a fragmented view. Within A, we have total sales. So total sales are just going to be the name of we want our measure to be, right? So as we know, DAX is just what we're writing here, but this is actually going to be a measure named total sales. Uh, we have the equal sign where B is. So that's going to be your operator. So that's going to tell you, hey, this is what is going to begin the measure. So it's separating the naming convention that we have listed between the actual expression that we're using as well. So the expression that we're using is sum. So sum just meaning totaling whatever values within a certain table and column. To open up the expression for sum, we have to use a parentheses. So as you can see, the open bracket here. And then we have to go into the echo indicator, which is going to be your sales table. So we want to retrieve our data from the sales table. And then next, we want to identify where we want to some data from specifically. So we have sales amount, that's a column. So now we're telling Power BI, hey, give me the sum of what's in sales and the sales amount column, and then return that total to me as a measure and name that measure total sales. So that's really the basic concept of how DAX is written. And there's so many measures out there that you can write, but you can apply them almost anywhere within your dashboards because they're reusable. Next, we have a more complex DAX. So this one's going to be called store sales. You have your operator here under B. Now we have calculate. So calculate is going to be a different expression that we're utilizing. So calculate means now we're looking at data, not just summing everything together, but looking at specific data points that we want to extract and then calculate those together. We're actually using the measure from total sales from the last slide. So we're using that as a base because we want to know what the amount is, but we want to know what the amount is for table channel and then channel name. Right, so that's the table, that's the column. Now we want to specify even further store. So we want to see total sales in this table, in this column for this value, and then return that as a measure so that we can use that within our dashboards. So that's how specific you can get with writing DAX is you can specify exactly what you want to return and then use that universally across your dashboard as well. So next we have measures. So measures are going to be something like a count, sum, anything that's going to give you a value output. So what you saw in the last slide after the DAX is written, it's actually going to be considered a measure because it's going to give you a specific data point. The benefit with measures is that you can reuse them constantly. So it's not like a formula in Excel where it's locked to a box or a cell. You can now relay back to that measure at any point in time and then drag it into your 
DAX that you're writing. It also makes it more efficient, right? So as you're building your dashboards, you have measures that are listed here. So example, measure one, two, and three. So think of it as the sum DAX that was written. It's just going to be a measure. So of count sales, for example, or to calculate one. Now there is a bunch of types of different measures. So here we have aggregated measures. We have folders. We have calculated columns, we have regular measures, KPIs. You're going to see these more often than not, just because they're the most commonly used. And then you'll see a global one as well. So the geo data, if you're working with anything that has longitude, latitude, you'll kind of see that indicator there. So these are all icons that are represented so that you can delineate what type of measure is what. And we'll go into most of these at a later time in a later video series. So stay tuned for that one. So going forward, we're actually going to go into a new series. We're actually going to talk about different measures. We're going to write out DAX. We're going to show you how calculations can work and complex ones as well so that you can adopt it within your dashboard use for your unit. Thanks for watching and see you next time.